Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. We're going to be taking a look at a game here between a couple of 1400 rated players. Now, I don't commentate on other players' games all that often on the channel, but in this particular case, the civilizations really jumped out at me. So we've got Japanese against Vikings, and both of these often played as archer civs, but supposed to be infantry civs. And if you remember in the last patch, the November patch, they really buffed all of these castle age unique units that these civilizations have. And Japanese and Vikings actually got some of the biggest buffs to Samurai and Berserks, respectively. So I'm kind of curious at this level. So again, like 1400s, like on that line of top 10% of ranked players. And I'm curious, are we actually going to see some of these Castle Age unique units? Or is that still not quite enough? And we're just going to see an Archer game play out. And so in the blue here, we've got Scipio. Scipio, of course, uh, I'm sure in reference to the very famous Roman general, uh, famous for defeating Hannibal Barca. And on the other side, we've got Monkey5566. Uh, and Monkey's also very famous, of course, for eating bananas. Probably the, uh, I think the naming advantage here goes to Scipio. And I think probably the Civ advantage as well. I looked it up, and Vikings have kind of a 52-53% win rate against Japanese. So not massive, but Red's a little bit of an underdog here. So a little part of me is going to be cheering for Red throughout this. Uh, so we're just going to speed up here. At this level, you know, 1400, it's not expert level, uh, not professional level, but fair to say they're going to have a, a pretty clean routine dark age here for both of them. And luring these elephants. Remember, elephants have extra food. So they have 400 food on them, which is 60 more than a regular boar. So you can see that might actually change builds a little bit. Delay farms another minute. I uh, certainly can probably go up a little bit earlier, maybe even one villager earlier. Just gives a little more flexibility in dark and feudal age. And blue coming out here being very aggressive with this scout. I'm managing to snag three of these goats. Wow. <laughs> Almost right under the town center too. All right, so Scipio is pretty serious. He's actually running away with these goats. And red doesn't really seem too fussed about that. A little surprised. Uh, where is the scout? The scout's out here. He doesn't necessarily have to let those go. He could send a scout to try to steal him back. But I guess maybe he's not worried about it. So he's got some... Uh, maybe he's actually going to push these. Oh, no, he already is pushing these. Okay, so he's like, all right, whatever. I'll just push the ostrich and my zebra. Got some extra food on my elephants. You know, two sheeps. Honestly, yeah. It just means that you have to make farms a little bit earlier. Or put a few extra on berries. We'll see. A couple ways to, to deal with that. So he's walling up here. Going to go with a barracks right away. And it makes a lot of sense. As Japanese, you have faster attacking uh, infantry. In fact, Japanese have a bit of an advantage here in the opening. So remember, Vikings have a great economy because of free wheelbarrow, but they don't have a Dark Age bonus, whereas Japanese do. They get the cheaper camps. So actually, initially right off the bat, it uh, looks like he's actually going to be going up with 19 villagers. I wouldn't be surprised to see Red have a bit of an advantage here at the start. Committing some to gold, so might be thinking archers after this, or this could just be... Uh, probably for the men-at-arms upgrade. I guess you'd have to get some extra gold. So we'll keep going. I would actually expect a barracks from both. Yeah, so we see a little bit later for the Viking player. And both going up, although Japanese player is going to hit quite a bit sooner. So he's got one fewer villager. The whole thing with these militia is you just want to get the fight in the other person's base instead of yours. And give yourself time to wall up. And it's going to go... Maybe I'll slow this down a little bit here gonna go with the archery range here that makes a lot of sense this is typically how Japanese are played looks like we're gonna have a little fight here between some men-at-arms nice little quick wall with the houses there and also an archery range going up in this area as well nothing really strange about that and he's coming in so they're both gonna have a men-at-arms battle here of course red should have the advantage since his are faster attacking though of course Vikings also have 20% more HP and you can see they have more HP than reds so 54 HP on the men-at-arms as opposed to 45. Blue did a nice job actually targeting that scout there and picking that off first. And then both players having to think about the hill bonus here as well. Uh, yeah, you can see fast attacking Japanese men-at-arms. Just very strong. And even the villagers. Ooh, I don't know about this. Uh, yeah, for other civilizations, maybe you can rush their, their men-at-arms. But actually managing to get two villagers here in this. And just, yeah, whoops, ran to the town center. Happens to everybody. And so, like I said, these aren't expert level players, so you're going to have little slip-ups like that. Although I think, like I said, that can happen to anybody to just run to the town center. Essentially nullifying uh, both of their drushes, except Blue still has a scout left over. Uh, as a scout, we're two villagers, though. I think that was in Red's favor. I think that was a nice exchange for Red. He'll be happy with that. And now transitioning to archers. And I think both are probably just going to start building up archer numbers. We've got two archers in queue here. 
Managing to sneak and double bit axe. We don't have that for red. And of course, free wheelbarrow. So immediately, as soon as you hit feudal, the civilization advantage here flips from Japanese to Vikings. Yeah, part of losing those two sheep, you can see you have to throw seven on berries. You have, have to put farms down. I'm sure the Viking player has fewer farms. Yeah, still working on sheep. But you can see the little ripple effect that happens, which means now it's really hard to afford a blacksmith and a wall up. So just those two sheep can end up having a ripple effect in kind of that early to mid feudal age. And it seems like blue is primarily walling with houses, which is going to be a little slower to put the walls up, but they are going to be stronger than palisades. Blue also making nice use of the hill advantage here that he's got. And is also a bit quicker here to grab fletching, which is a nice advantage as well. And managing to scare away red's archers there. At this point, the main goal for both players is just to get fully walled and try to build that little bit of an archer mass. Uh, yeah, he's coming out with the blacksmith. That makes a lot of sense. You definitely want fletching. In fact, you probably don't even fight until you get fletching, I would think. Yeah, he's just going to pull back. And so still... Got the two villagers, so I think red should be happy in this position. Although blue's got the score lead, I think that's mostly from scouting, because his scout's still alive. And going to full walls, this is starting to get to the point where you're... Oh, second archery range. Okay, so uh, blue's pretty committed here to going archers. Are we going to see that from red? I don't think so. He guys grabbing fletching now, so maybe he could. He's really hurting for wood, though. And those berries ran out, so now he's trying to move everybody. And having 17 on wood, which is quite a bit, I think he's trying to bounce everything out. He's also got to be careful with his archers out here. And probably cleaned up. I think the best you can hope for is to kill the scout, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, Blue actually getting a bit of a, a mass here. Those six archers, he may even decide to push forward with this, we'll see. Yeah, pulling the archers back. Oh, wow. Both going into padded archer armor. That's interesting. Usually I see people skip that. Uh, especially prioritize double bit axe over that. So they both seem pretty committed to trying to take good archer fights here. Neither one seems particularly interested in going straight for castle age. And blue only has seven on food. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. He delayed his farms that long. I guess you don't really need that much food when you're going double archery range. And coming out with this group of archers, so it's 10 archers against 6, so it does have the advantage. Uh, although red is fully walled. Oh, no, he's not. He's just walled in the back. He'll, he'll be able to get that. Oh, this is sneaky. So you get in as close as you can. That's pretty smart. And then start firing. Gonna get one and maybe two? Yeah, get two. Nice, so he even bounced out the villagers there. So both have lost two villagers now. And just running back. <laughs> he's not even interested in pushing. It's like, no. I got my two villagers. I'm out. And interesting to see what red does here in response. Because he's only on one archery range. So he's going to be behind in numbers. And I think he's probably just thinking about going up to the next stage. Which is sort of again, uh, yeah, had an archer armor. I'm not sure if that was the right call. Especially if you're just going to stay defensive like this. But he's definitely going to be going up uh, much sooner than blue is. And blue is massing a lot of archers. He's got 14 right now. Yeah, it's pretty serious. I think he's going to come in here and actually try to break in this time. And red having to react with a tower. Yeah, red doesn't have very good wood lines, I have to say. Both of them are very far forward, whereas blue actually managed to grab two wood lines in behind his walls. Which, you know, is going to save you having to make a tower like this. And this is still a vulnerable area. Come back with a mangonel or something later. Blue actually pushing in, probably wishing he was Saracens right now. Uh, although, actually, with the massive archers, it's not that hard to break through. Okay, you got a market going down, so... Uh, oh, red's grabbing wheelbarrow now. Okay. Th that's interesting. He's grabbing a market, because he doesn't need the market. He's already got the two buildings. It's a little bit of a, a skirmish here, but... Yeah, I think blue saw the skirmishers. And is, You know, you really want to keep your archer mass... Losing your archer mass is, uh, is a pretty big deal in feudal. So I think it's playing a little safe. I get that. And red has clicked up to castle age and is now putting down his second archery range. And it's going to try to catch up with numbers. Yeah, I'm not sure we're really going in an infantry direction here. I was kind of hoping for that. But yeah, now he's grabbing double bit axe as he goes up to castle age. 
Okay, so actually we end up with the same upgrades here, just did them at slightly different times. And Blue really going to push the issue here. He's getting kind of close to aging up. But his main advantage is all the extra archers. So now it's going to be coming in here. So you might wonder why here. Well, it's so that, you know, no villager can come in and wall behind it. So that's pretty smart. Uh, this is a much better place to attack, certainly, than here. Where, you know, you can see red just immediately walled in behind it. So blue is interested, not just uh, bugging him a little bit here and knocking on the door, but actually going in, probably trying to get a couple villagers. So he is going to sneak in here. And now clicked up to Castle Age. This is actually a little dangerous. I mean, I like it. It's it's bold. So Blue's jumping in with 16 archers. And the thing to remember is what you really want is to hit Castle Age and get all your upgrades uh, so that they go from, like right now they've got 5 range, and you're going to have 7 range once you get crossbows and your um, Vodkin arrow. And this is smart too. Blue's leaving an archer here. Uh, just to make sure that, you know, <laughs> Red isn't going to come up and do anything sneaky and lock him in. He's got to be a little careful. You really want to hold on to this archer mass as much as possible. Uh, although, having said that... Oh, nice wall. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a lot of villagers here. And you can probably pick them off in two shots each. Okay, yeah, this tower uh, really did help there. Or else, imagine you didn't have this tower. All these villagers would have to run. Yeah, this uh, in retrospect, this tower it <laughs> did a lot of work. Uh, still losing a couple archers. Got to be really careful about that. You can really kill your momentum. He did actually pick off three villagers, though. Oh, and Red. The Red's being sneaky and trying to wall him in. But no, not quite. He's going to get away. Although maybe he doesn't want to, because he's about to hit Castle Age. Red's already hit Castle Age, and Red is going for Cavalry Archers. That's an interesting choice. And I don't mean interesting as a euphemism there for that I disapprove of anything. It's just uh, a little unexpected, and I'm curious to see how it works out. Blue hitting Castle Age now. Uh, like, all of these archers, this is very bold. And you can see running into some skirmishers here. I'm not sure I've got the, the numbers to really deal well with these skirmishers, but maybe. So he's got these upgrades. He's got to keep these alive for 30 seconds. And all sorts of upgrades coming in here for Red, who it seems very committed to cavalry archers. The thing with cavalry archers, uh, Japanese don't have an explicit bonus for them, though they can get them fully upgraded. So it's not, it's not a crazy play. But the thing is... So a crossbow has 35 HP and 7 attack. So here we've got 50 HP and 8 attack. So they are a tankier unit. The problem is just they're so expensive. Not just for each unit, but think about all the upgrades you need to get. You need to get all of the... Oh, this is a nice fight, though. Like, once you get equal numbers, this is going to go really well for the cavalry archers. I'd be surprised if he loses more than one here. And he may not even lose one. Oh, he does lose one, but just barely. Yeah, and cleans up, you know, 7 or 8 crossbows. So you can take good fights with them. Thing is, though, you need bloodlines in addition to all of the regular, um, yeah, all the regular archer upgrades, including thumbring. Thumbring's really important, and it's just hard to afford all of that. Difficult transition. I wonder if Blue regrets keeping his archers in there and not escaping when he had the chance, because it didn't really get a lot of value. It felt like he didn't even pick off another villager with those crossbows. So now I actually feel like momentum is on Red's side, even though Red's a little bit behind in score. I think he's got the momentum. He's certainly got the army numbers at the moment. Because it's, uh, yeah, 11 military to 8 military. But the 8 military are just crossbows. i just love to see him pick up bloodlines here. And Blue doing a good job having two town centers going down already. One's already up. And Red just adding the second town center. Great spot for that. Control that wood and that gold. Really like that town center. And Red's going to try, <laughs> try the same trick where he goes to the end and tries to break through. But Blue's got a nice defense here. And I uh, hope Red notices. Yeah, there you go. Pulls him back. Actually manages to avoid all those shots. That was nice. Really wants to break in here and probably try to sneak past Blue. So he does manage to break in there. It'll be interesting to see what he does with that. This theoretically, he could come over here, harass a bit. Once the crossbows come over... Oh, he is trying to dive. Oh, no, he thinks better of it. Cavalry archers playing a little game of chicken here with the crossbows. Blue having to send out a villager to close that gap. Guys, isn't that kind of a cool detail? If you look at the houses for Vikings, they have a little wheelbarrow beside them sometimes. <laughs> I kind of like that. Now, you know, looking at this, do you actually think that's fully walled? Because that's a pretty big gap between them. Like, between those houses, I feel like you could fit a unit through there. 
I don't know. It's always worth double checking with a palisade. Oh, managing to lose one cavalry archer. And <laughs> this one archer just tagging along. I think you gotta leave him behind. Yeah, these guys move faster without him. Blue picking up his archer armor here. I haven't seen any upgrades coming in for these cavalry archers. Because cavalry archers upgraded are great. Cavalry archers not upgraded are very expensive. And I mean, they're gonna do better than the crossbows, but I think you're getting outmassed here. Yeah, 16 to 7. Yeah, I gotta be careful bringing those back. This Megan Elk could help though, because this actually adds a little bit of a threat to buildings. So we've got 65 villagers to 51 with handcart. Yeah, you gotta remember that. All these villagers are also working a little bit better. Oh, I love this reaction by Blue. So as soon as he sees the Mangonel breaking through, he immediately throws down a forward siege workshop to make Mangonels of his own. That's a great reaction. Because you really don't want to be fighting with these crossbows here against this Mangonel. Yeah, pull him back. There you go. A really well-landed shot can kill a, a crossbow because you do 40 damage right in the center. And so these only have 35 HP. So two shots, you can wipe out this whole thing. Just don't risk it. I'm sure he's got a Mangonel coming. There you go. And Mangonel coming out on the back. Okay. I'm a little surprised he didn't have the Mangonel come out right in the front and snipe him. You know, a little bit of attack ground move here. Oh, nice. This is actually some pretty good micro. Okay, so both on three town centers and behind this. Hmm. I think whose position I like better here. I mean, Blue seems a little bit stuck in his base. But I'm liking his economy here a little bit better. He's got 73, so he's got a 15 villager advantage. Oh, almost got that. Nice, they keep <laughs> getting sort of these glancing blows, but can't quite finish each other off. Managing to pick off a villager there. In this little push, Red's actually managed to pick off five of Blue's villagers, which is pretty good. Oh, managing to save that Mangonel. Four HP. You're going to try to trade it one for one here. No, he's out of there. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, well, nice reaction by Blue there. And I think that's going to get it. Yep. So I'm managing to hold that off and prevent, you know, what could have been uh, a pretty bad exchange uh, had he tried to take those Mangonel with his crossbows. This is a good cavalry archer mass, though. So we've got 22 cavalry archers against 26 um, crossbows. So red should be able to take a direct fight. Although I feel like we're missing some upgrades. We still don't have bloodlines. And still don't have thumb ring. I didn't see that come in. And blue thinking about going out, but then notices that he's getting attacked. And this palisade wall goes down fast. Oh, well, we're going to see another... Another example of a player diving in with their units. We'll see if this goes a little bit better for red than it did for blue. So he picked off one villager already. So he had seven kills as he comes in. Let's see how much he gets. I mean, that's a lot of villagers. That's 31 villagers hanging out right there. Yeah, nice little attempt at a wall. I like that. Because then you kind of stop the cavalry archer. They take the town center fire. And cavalry archers, you need to keep this mass so that you can't lose these units and start rebuilding this from scratch. Pick up husbandry for a little bit of extra speed. And this can be so annoying, having cavalry archers run around your base. Especially when you wall in an area this big. Uh, so, so far, I think we've only got two villager kills. But yeah, these cavalry archers, he's trying to chase them with mangonels. You just gotta keep them moving, and try not to take too much damage from the town centers. Okay, this could go either way. Uh, you gotta move them. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta... Just don't even worry about your economy. Just gotta keep your eyes on this. Uh, it's down to 14, I think. Didn't he have 22? Oh, do you guys think that Red broke that palisade as a way out, and then Blue closed it? So now Red's trapped, and he thought that he had a way out. I bet you that's what happened there. Red is going to lose all of his cavalry archers here. This is kind of a disaster. Unless he can just run past all these units and get out. Yikes, losing all your cavalry archers at 37 minutes. He's only got five left. Uh-oh, Red. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, I think that might have been... Might have been a little bit of a mistake. Hard to say. I mean, he did get... So, what was he at? Seven? So we had nine villager picks? Would have been nice to see him get out of here. I'm not sure. But he probably thought that was still open. That's too bad, because now <laughs> Blue's got 36 crossbowmen, and is going to be looking to push out guard tower. Making guard tower? Oh, nice. I think we're going for a, a Japanese Yasuma strategy. Okay, I'm down for this. 
I wonder if he switches out of Cavalry Archer, though, because he's rebuilding all the numbers from scratch, and that's quite difficult to do. And here, again, we're sort of losing that mass. We need a lot of Cavalry Archers. It's too much gold to just give away. Um, I think he might actually be better off uh, switching into Mangonels. Uh, I hate to say to switch into Skirmishers, but that's got to cross your mind here. You see this many. 37 crossbows. Wow. Uh, the one good thing for red here is that blue doesn't have siege with this. So we're just looking to pick off villagers. We're not going to be able to get buildings or anything like that. And just shot his way in there. Although, of course, we already have this backup wall here. And he's of good range. So it's 7 range. Uh, town center 6 range. So you do outrange a town center. Again, you have to really keep an eye on your units. And again, we're seeing a player kind of dive into the other one's base, which can be risky. Okay, so, whoa, Manganel, oh no. Okay, that was, uh, that went a lot better than expected. <laughs> it could have been much worse. Oh, nice, look at Red trapping him in, too. <laughs> oh no, he, he sees it, so he's like, get out of here. Yeah, you gotta be really careful. Again, I think Blue's probably getting flashes to the last time he had Archer standing here, and they all got cleaned up. Uh, nice with all the towers. Kind of limits the mobility here. So I think blue just wants out at this point. And got to keep an eye on your units there. Because this is most of his mass. So we only got six cavalry archers. And the problem is red just doesn't have an army to clean this up. Because this is trapped at the moment. Although actually now it can get out. And the mangonel coming just a little bit too late. Although <laughs> he's sending another villager. Oh nice. <laughs> How much have we got? 30 crossbows here. And we should be able to get through here if they focus it down, but a little indecisive, and in come the Mangonel shots. Oh no. Oh guys, this is like 30 crossbows. How many times are we going to see a player throw away their entire army in the other one's base? This is an amazing trap though. Nice job by Red. Wow, cleans the whole thing up. Doesn't even lose the Mangonel. What a hero. Guys, that whole army's gone. <laughs> wow, that was amazing. What an amazing play. Did manage to get some villagers and is now going up to Imperial Age with 4,000 food in the bank. But still feels like the third time we've had a player who dives into the other town and just loses their army. I love the aggression though, it's making it a fun game. Okay, we see a forward castle coming out here. Uh, I think Blue is still in a good position though. Although the score says it's very close, but I still got 93 villagers to 110. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Uh, Japanese player here booming very well. Up to 100. 11 villagers now. Nice. Okay, still don't have the cavalry archer mass though. They're losing those 20 cavalry archers. I mean, add those 20 cavalry archers to this 10. And now we've got an army. Uh, <laughs> that's a little dangerous running in there. Managing to grab one of those, but not going to be able to deny this. And imagine we add 30 crossbows to this. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I do this a lot too. When I have uh, crossbows, I'll try to dive with them too much into somebody's town. But it also makes the game more fun when you take big risks and you go for big plays like that. And I'm sure Blue also wasn't expecting all the towers in that base, which I kind of set that whole thing up. Really not seeing any berserks. I'm a little sad about that. I uh, do have a castle, not seeing any samurai. Also kind of sad about that. We like seeing the Yasuma keeps though, and the cavalry archer play. Still haven't seen Thumbring. Maybe I missed it. But no Thumbring or Ballistics on these yet. It just takes so long to upgrade cavalry archers. And it's just so many techs you need to pick up. So both actually going Imperial Age here. And not a bad Imperial time, considering all the units that both have been making. And teching into uh, Cavalry, that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure if he's thinking Knights, or if he's thinking a little bit longer term, like Light Cavalry. Oh, careful. Probably not expecting a Mangonel out here. Although, actually, why is there a Mangonel out here? <laughs> Right here, gonna get a nice little raid on some villagers, though. Yeah, I'm not actually sure what Red's plan is here for a unit. He's definitely thinking cavalry, I guess. Uh, we do have these coming in. These are gonna be Arbalest. I was trying for another castle, but it seems to have been denied by Mangonel. Probably the same Mangonel, just adding its stats. This stone is actually really important for Red. He's gonna be making towers. So, Blue's castle did get denied here. I think probably the tower helped and the uh, Mangonel helped. And Red trying to sneak. Ooh, this could be really good. These find... How much is this? 15 villagers. Uh, that'd be pretty nice. I don't know if you can see it, though. 
this is what he sees. Oh, it just out of range. It just moved a little bit. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Because if Red had seen that, that would be huge. 15 villagers right there. Yeah, and this push is looking pretty serious. He's sending in a lot more villagers. He really wants his castle up. And once you get this castle up, I guess uh, he's Imperial. He's making a trebuchet. You can maybe fight this off. And almost enough for another castle. Blue is going serious with castles here. Let's make some berserks. Scipio, make berserks. Come on, man. Actually, I have a feeling we'll make berserks. Because they're just such a good raiding unit. I think it's going to do it. And might see some rams and stuff. Actually, rams would, wouldn't be too bad against these guard towers. Although, yeah, some of the extra arrows. They kind of do a little bit better against rams than you might think. I'm still trying to break in here. Uh, Blue doing a nice job, actually, reinforcing this. If you're just going to build houses anyway, might as well reinforce. Makes a lot of sense. And now trebbing this castle down. And Blue making another castle here. I wonder why here. Hmm... I think he probably saw the stone, and he's probably just trying to deny the stone. Didn't realize that the stone's already been mined. Yeah, I'm curious why here, and not, some, like, up here to protect the gold. And Berserks, come on, yes, Berserks, nice. So Berserks now, three more attack, one more melee armor. As of a recent patch, a little bit more HP uh, in Castle Age. I think four more HP in Castle Age. Not huge changes, but a nice little buff. I'm really confused about Red's army, though. And if Red's just thinking towers? Because uh, all we've got right now are two knights and two onagers. And Red is the master of of traps and onagers here. So I'd like to see more of those from him. I think that's going to be the ticket. So what I would love to see from Red. I don't, I don't know if it's the right play. Okay, more onagers, yes. If I were blue, <laughs> I'd feel so nervous with these up front. Near red and his onagers. Getting flashbacks of 10 minutes ago. Uh, I'd like to see red make more onagers to deal with this. And maybe some skirmishers instead of cavalry archers. And take that cavalry archer gold and go samurai. Come on, man. Just do it. Do it. Just think about how good samurai are going to be against the berserks. All that extra bonus damage. And just samurai are awesome. Come on. Uh, oh, this is going to be bad. Nice. <laughs> Every time Blue makes an army, <laughs> there's an onager for that. <laughs> oh, no, not all of them. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Blue's going to... Blue must hate onagers. Or at least Red using onagers. Every time there's an army. Just... All Red needs... If Red just made five onagers, stop making cavalry archers. Make five onagers. He can probably win this game. Yeah, even going for Parthian Tactics. I mean, you can see he's really doubling down on this. Uh, the problem here, though, uh, I think he's discovering, is he doesn't have Heavy Cavalry Archer. And that's a pretty expensive upgrade. And Heavy Cavalry Archers also, well, just Cavalry Archers in general, cost a lot of gold. And aside from this little bit of gold, now Blue has this gold. Uh, where are the other golds? There's gold over here that Blue secured. Was this gold? I think this was gold. Maybe it wasn't. Uh, he's got the gold out here. I'm not seeing any other gold here. For red. So the cavalry archer is a little bit of a dead end. If you don't have a gold source. Because you really don't want to be selling resources. Uh, although he's got floating quite a bit of resources right now. He could probably sell a few of them. Hopefully for decent market prices. But yeah, I'm a little worried about... Yeah, I think he's realizing that as well. So he's switching to light calf. Uh, probably for some raiding. And maybe even his... Sort of an answer to the Arbalest. But the problem is, uh, these Elite Berserk are going to be so good against Light Calf. Yeah, you're in a tough position is Red. Although, Red has the score lead. Uh, and I think he'd be in a, a little bit better position if he could grab this stone as well. And he really needs to grab this gold. So he's sending traps for this castle. I think he's reading the situation quite well. And Blue's also doing a really good job just grabbing the map to soak up all this gold that you can possibly grab. And it seems to be going purely for Berserks now, which I love. I <laughs> think he's given up on the Arblast. He's like, nope. As long as there's Onagers, <laughs> my Arblast are not safe. Yeah, and seeing a much bigger commitment toward Chain Barding Armor. The only problem here with this switch in the Cavalry is, again, it's really expensive for gold. So I, I think he's really feeling the crunch for that. And this gold's about to run out. Yeah, I think even if he could get Hazar, he's probably not even... I mean, Japanese don't get it, but even if you could, I don't think he's in a position to spend 600 gold for that right now. 
and finally getting ballistics. Yeah, I, I'm just worried about... Uh, I don't know if there's enough units here for red. And these berserks are going to be so good against trash. I didn't see if he grabbed the um, uh, berserker gang. But even without that, just that healing is so nice. Yeah, and this is where, like, in theory, cavalry archers countered berserks. But, you know, in practice, this is what happens. You can't always be there and you can't always be watching them. So you can kind of hit and run, and he's going to try to do that. But it's so much harder than just patrolling your berserks in. Although these towers are actually fighting the berserks off. And then all these come back, they're all going to heal up. Oh, he's going into more Arbalest. Nice. Red, make an onager. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. What do you make here as red? Because if you make skirmishers, they're going to be so bad against the berserks. You need to answer the berserks. You almost need, like, samurai and skirmisher. Uh, but even samurai, he doesn't even have a gold income anymore. So actually, it's getting a little dicey. And yeah, there's no gold. Surprise, there's still relics out. But I guess everybody's been pretty pretty focused on this right now. Mm, actually, neither one has grabbed relics. So that's another... Oh, nice. So we can grab this gold. Uh, yeah, that's a, a potential source of gold there. Yeah, I think if you're going to go Cavalry Archer, I think grabbing those relics would have been a, a really big game changer. Although, it, you know, it's easier to say than, than to do. It's hard to pay attention to everything. Uh, this is a pretty serious threat, though. I'm actually surprised the scores are even, as it feels like Blue's really in control of this right now. Uh, it's a nice rating, though. I like that. So getting some value out of those uh, that, that Light Cav. Although not having much in the way of gold. Uh, I'm not sure we're ever going to get them fully upgraded, like with the attack upgrades. And this is a big threat. I don't know how you deal with this. So, we see red is mining this gold. That's going to be really nice. How much gold do we even have here? So, like, 500-something, 800, like, 1,100. Okay, so, like, 13 or 1,400 gold there. It's going to help, for sure. And these towers, I love to do this as well. We just put a couple of towers around, get the Yasuma tech. Oh, he's even going. <laughs> he's playing for keeps. <laughs> Nice. Although I wish he had more stone. That's uh, that's holding back the strategy right now. So he's gone for a very stone and very gold heavy uh, strategy here. And yeah, I don't know how you deal with all these berserks. I guess the towers. I mean, they're they're not bad at taking down towers though. It's getting the last attack upgrade. Uh, again, I wish I noticed if you got berserker gang. And even chieftains might be a good idea if he's running into a lot of these light cap. Uh, this turns into a slow push though. Okay, I'm just happy I saw Berserks. And honestly, that trap was amazing. <laughs> that trap down here. <laughs> Sneaking in with the little house there and getting all of them like, completely for free. It was amazing. Okay, so red still with the score lead. I'm a little confused where that's coming from. Oh, it's because of it put the kill-death ratio. Wow. 267 to 154. That's great. Uh, and sort of desperately trying to repair this, but it's actually got no stone left. Really wishing he had all this stone. I mean, that's enough for two castles right there. Uh, this feels like a slow push, though. Uh, yeah, you gotta get in. You gotta raid. But holy cow, look at all the blues resources. Yeah, 4,000 food. He's uh, making the switch to the light cav, maybe? Or I guess probably not, but yeah, I need to make some light cav. You know, looking at population, they're both around, like, that 140 to 150. So, interestingly, population-wise, and actually score-wise, uh, Blue doesn't seem to have the advantage. So, I just think his army feels more sustainable to me. Yeah, so the Viking lack of Thumb Ring, I don't really think it changes that much here, to be totally honest. I, like, Arblester is still a good choice. And it's still getting tons of good value. It's going to be good against these Cavalry Archers when you have a mass like this. And then you just got the Elite Berserk to tank a bit of damage, heal back up. There's so much value. And Red not really able to come in and uh, break in here and raid. And again, if you're going to make houses, you might as well make them behind your walls. Because these Palisade walls have 250 HP and these have 900. So that's pretty good. And a oh, big desperation villager rush forward to take out the Trebuchet. Try to save this castle. Not going to happen though. And Berserk's even coming here and cleaning up those. Uh, so this gold... You know what? This is actually still worth taking. It's still almost 800 gold here. Yeah, I think... Red, what's the play though, man? I don't know. What do you even do here is red? Okay, taken to Elite Skirmisher. It's the right idea. I... I agree with this. You're seeing a lot of... Um, yeah, seeing a lot of Arbluster. I think it's just a little bit too late. 
And I still don't have a great way to deal with the, uh, the Berserks here. Would have loved to see some Samurai Berserk action, but <laughs> you can't always get what you want, I guess. Okay, uh, I think Blue's got this under control. Even though the scores are so close, he just has so much map control. I feel like he's running in. Uh, he's got more population. The rest have got lots of villagers. But uh, a lot of them are idle. How many idols? We have 25 idols and 25 idols. So it's just kind of hard to keep track of everything at a certain point. All right, we're going to speed it up, I think. Yeah, I just want to show you guys this. Man, skirmishers are so bad against berserks. One skirmisher fires at one berserk, the berserk actually lives forever. <laughs> That's how bad skirmishers are. They, they can only do as much damage as their berserk can heal. And a berserk's so good against trash. So good. Maybe the best anti-trash unit. I'm trying to think of a better anti-trash unit. They get bonus damage against cavalry. They heal up, so they can take skirmisher fire really, really well. And then you throw in some Arbalest, so you can't go Pikeman. Not that you would go Pikeman against Berserk anyway. It's just not really anything you can do here. You know what he needs? Come on. You need one Onager. You've got enough. Make two Onagers. I honestly believe if Red makes two Onagers, he can win this game. I've seen what he can do with the Onagers. The only thing I would suggest here is uh, to made Skirmishers a little bit earlier. I love the Cavalry Archer play. I don't want to... I'm not going to say anything negative about that, but maybe, um, yeah, a couple more onagers and gives the GG. So, nice game by Blue there. Love to see all the Elite Berserks. Wow, he fully upgraded them, too. Elite Berserk and everything. I'm sure he did get the uh, HP regeneration pack and everything. And Red actually did a great job holding on, and even the score is very, very close. That kind of tells the story. Uh, kill of death ratio was evening up, though, as he was switching into Skirmishers and, and Light Cav. So, you kind of expect that. Wow. <laughs> so blue lost 90 villagers and red lost 142 villagers. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, so I'll just go through here and, and show you guys the stats. Yeah, way more gold. That's and actually way more stone. And if you're going for cavalry archers and you're going for Yasuma Towers, and the other guy gets more gold and stone than you, that's uh that's not a good sign. Well, not as many samurai as I was hoping to see, but at least we got to see some berserks and an amazing trap. And Red was just a couple of onagers away from maybe even taking that game. I don't know. Maybe I'm overselling that. But either way, something a little different on the channel. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.